still exist. Perfectly balanced. As all things should be. I hope they remember you. Aloha, this is Trinidad, the island man, your island man. Oh, coming to you live once again from beautiful Hawaii here on the island of Oahu, bringing you, yes you, the best movie reviews on the entire island of Oahu. And yes, this is Trinidad, the island man, your island man. And whew, it is now April 27th, Friday, uh, 20 minutes after 2 in the morning. <laughs> uh, I just got out of uh, Avengers Infinity War, uh, the 10.45 p.m. showing on Thursday night, April 26th. Um, and it ended at 1.30 in the morning, and I had to sit there along with many, many other people in the audience uh, to regain my bearings. And, uh, whew. Oh, it is, uh, it was something else. Uh, remember our rating scale? Shock and thumbs up. It's good to see. I recommend it. Shock and thumbs down. It's bad to see. It's junk. I don't recommend it. Skip it. And for Avengers Infinity War, it is a shock of thumbs up all the way. Oh my God. As long as this movie was, well, it was just, it's like, almost three hours, over two and a half hours long. Um, it was amazing. It was incredible. It was spectacular. It was uncanny, if I wanted to use the uh, X-Men term. Uh, you could say fantastic, <laughs> as in four. Uh, but these are not spoilers. <laughs> Um, these are not spoilers, uh, but this review will have a slightly, just a little bit of touching of spoilers, uh, stuff that's obvious from the trailers, uh, stuff that lots of people have, have put together again, uh, you know, by themselves. Uh, you knew somebody was going to die in this. You knew nobody was going to walk away from Thanos unscathed. And again, it is a strong shock of thumbs up. Uh, if you have not seen it already, uh, you will definitely see it. Uh, I had to duck for cover every single moment I had all of this week b until I saw it. Uh, because everybody's putting crap out online <laughs> about this movie. And now it's my turn because I've seen it. So... Uh, there will be some minor spoilers in this. Uh, where to begin? I guess, as usual, the best place to begin is, of course, at the beginning. Oh, and let me just say this. Let me preface this review by saying, never has there been a tale of more woe and sorrow. Uh, this is definitely, uh, if you took all of Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, all the pain and anguish at the end of that, and mush it together with the pain and sorrow and despair of Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings, the first movie where Frodo and Samwise Ganji were off on their own, the fellowship shattered, you wouldn't even begin to touch Avengers Infinity War. It starts off right at the end of Thor Ragnarok, amazingly enough. And it moves full force 
like an elephant rampaging uh, its way through the streets. Uh, those here in Hawaii, uh, around Honolulu, will know of a special significance of that, uh, which is why the circus no longer comes to town. Um, but yes, and Thanos proves to be an unstoppable force, as what we see in the trailers. Uh, if you've seen any of the trailers, you've seen Thor being held by Thanos, his head being crushed. You've seen Loki surrounded. And you see the Hulk mysteriously back on Earth. And he is there, well, as Bruce Banner, to warn the remaining Avengers who are still in tatters after Civil War that Thanos is coming. But does Tony listen? Not really. Doctor Strange, master of the mystic arts, Sorcerer Supreme, he knows the danger. They have prophesied this moment, him and the other sorcerers, and it's still not enough. All their preparations, all their hopes and dreams just was not enough. to prevent Thanos from getting all the stones. Uh, many people have speculated who was going to die. What characters die in this? People thought, oh, is it going to be Captain America? Oh, is it going to be Iron Man? Oh, is it going to be Loki? Is it going to be Thor? Is it going to be the Hulk? Who dies? Who lives? Look like Vision, you know, in the trailers. They get the stone, pulling it out of him. Of course he's going to die, right? Well. I'm not going to say, but whatever you thought, magnify that by a hundred, magnify that by a thousand, magnify that by millions, billions of lives lost in the fight against Thanos, the mad Titan. He is truly an unstoppable force the likes of which the world has never seen, not even the Hulk, who ruled planet Sakaar with his countless victories, along with, you know, the Grand Master. The Hulk scared. Everyone's scared. Who knows what they're facing? Iron Man, who does not know, he knows no fear because he is foolishly locked in his intelligence, thinking that there is a way there. But even he admits to his fear, as he says he's been afraid of this Thanos character for six years, six years ago the Avengers met, to save the city from his first attack there with Loki and the Chichari, there in New York City. Ten years ago, this was formulating percolating with the very first Iron Man. We get to see old enemies and new return. You might consider this a spoiler, but there is a nod, a touch, a tip of the hat to the Red Skull. Very many people had suspected that he might return. And he might but not in any way that you can imagine. But still, I was happy to see him. Peter Dinklage from Game of Thrones is also in this movie. People wondered, people speculated who he is what his role is. I had thought that possibly he was one of the CGI'd characters uh, with Thanos' army, maybe his Black Order, one of them, uh, crack commandos or whatever. He's not. But he plays a role in Thanos' 
ascendance to godhood. And also a role in the means, in the hopes, to defeat it, as Thor specifically seeks him out. All I can say is think Hephaestus in Greek mythology. You know, if I knew more of Norse mythology, I would give you that type of reference. But essentially, the job is the same. The blacksmith of the gods, that is the role that Peter Dinklage plays. Hmm. You saw the epic battles with Spider-Man, Iron Man, against Thanos in what seemed to be one-on-one, mano-a-mano, duking it out. Those moments pale in significance to the actual fight, to what you see, the rush, the onslaught, in Wakanda. You can't imagine it from what you've seen from the trailers. You've got to experience it there on the screen and see it for yourself. Um, It is truly a spectacle. Uh, Worthy of any war epic movie Uh, prior to this, something that even Steven Spielberg himself, uh, you know, with all of his war movies, uh, would be proud to say if he had directed it. Uh, The Russo brothers do a fabulous job of juggling multiple characters, and they do it very well by breaking up the teams, uh, pretty much first in teams of three at first, three or four, uh, you know, to go about their individual quests. But finally, they do meld into groups to take on the Mad Titan himself, Thanos. Even even, uh, Karen Gillian, Nebula, plays a key and crucial part in this. Uh, you've seen those child or those child scenes of Gamora. Uh, I had no idea it would play such a heavy-handed role in this movie. Uh, there, those were only the tip of the iceberg. Um, once again, Marvel outshines itself, just like in Black Panther. Not only with the Black Panther himself. Not only with Wakanda, not only with the people of Wakanda coming to aid the rest of the Avengers, to aid and attempt to save the world, but they outdo Black Panther, the movie in itself, in the fact that Killmonger, as good a villain as he was, you know, uh, pretty much Thanos is cut of the same cloth. Uh, And in many ways, I think Killmonger would respect him. Uh, for their goals are somewhat uh, the same, eerily similar. The only exception with that, the only exception, the only exception is Thanos succeeds in his plans. but at a tremendous cost on all sides. I'd like to go into more spoilers, but I told you I would only sprinkle you with a little spoilers. Again, this is a shock of thumbs up. This movie was incredible, and I found myself at the end of the end credit scene, and there is only one end credit scene, wishing that I could just sit there in the theater an entire year awaiting for Avengers 4, whatever that will be called. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, They don't give you any hint on it. 
what we see as far as an end credit scene is for, and I won't give you any details, but it is for Captain Marvel. And those who have speculated, since it is <clears throat> the movie coming out after, uh, you know, Avengers Infinity War, after Ant-Man and the Wasp, I believe that's first and then Captain Marvel. Uh, Captain Marvel is hinted in the end credit scene. Um, and we get to see, well, we get to see, um, you know, speculation confirmed that she may be one of the last best hopes against Thanos in part four. Um, you know, some people have speculated on her power. Um, I was never a fan of the original Captain Marvel in the comic books, in the Marvel comic books. Uh, not talking about Shazam or anything like that, but the Marvel Captain Marvel. Um, you know, the man I didn't know. Miss Marvel, who becomes this incarnation of Captain Marvel, uh, I was a fan of. Um, but she did not have the power initially of you know the you know the original captain marvel the man um you know over time and in the current issues now in the comics uh she is of that that power level um and um and even surpassed all of that and if that's going to be the case in this captain marvel standalone movie They've really got their hands full uh, to develop this character because essentially they placed all the marbles on her. This is the last bet. Uh, you know, they put all the money on Captain Marvel uh, somehow to save the day coming up, it would appear, uh, for Avengers 4. Um, but, you know, and, and there has been other speculation, and again, this is all just speculation, that possibly for Avengers 4, Phase 4, we may see the Fantastic Four. Some people are thinking, oh, we may see the X-Men. Um, I don't know. I don't know what we'll see. I certainly hope. I pray that we see something. <laughs> something like that, because by golly, at the end of this movie... They need whatever help they can get. That is how dire things are for the Avengers after Infinity War. All right. Thank you so much. This is Trinidad, the Island Man, your Island Man, saying what you already know. Go see Avengers Infinity War. Uh, you know, it is a shock of thumbs up somewhere in the deep, caverns, uh, an abyss of despair. Zack Snyder is yelling, ah, why Warner Brothers? Why didn't you let me do <laughs> Dark Side? This is what I was going to do <laughs> with Justice League Part 2. Ah, uh, but there's no one there to, to answer his cries. Uh, just like at the end of this movie, there's no one there to answer our cries for hurry up and show me part two of Infinity War. <laughs> so yes, we have to wait an entire year. Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp will be coming up, I think, in July. And Christmas, I think, is Captain Marvel. Uh, we should probably get a lot of explanation of the aftermath or even the concurrence, because it's, I believe uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp will happen at the same time as events in Infinity War are going on. Um, Captain Marvel is going to be in the past, in the 80s, uh, showing her origin story and her rise to superpower level uh, of the cosmos. So it is likely that we will get that cosmic powered character coming to Earth to assist the Avengers for Avengers 4 against Thanos. 
and the continued battle. All right, thank you so much again, Trinidad, the Island Man, your Island Man, saying shock a thumbs up for Avengers Infinity War. However you can do it, go ahead and see this movie.